Okay, this is a short video on how to uh, <clears throat> create a sound file in Adobe InDesign. Not to create a sound file, but how to trigger a sound file in your Adobe InDesign document. Uh, we're going to bring in a sound file. We're going to play it. We're going to set up a button that plays it when you click it and stops it when you uh, <clears throat> when you click it again. So it's going to be a an on and off type uh, sound button. So with that, I'm going to share my screen. And we're going to go to Adobe InDesign. <clears throat> OK, so I've opened up a, a page here. And the first thing I'm going to do is bring in a sound file. Now, you can download a sound file, an MP3 file, from any uh, source that you want. <clears throat> I happen to get mine from uh, YouTube from the free YouTube library. And it's sitting right on my desktop here. So let me import that in. I'm going to go to File and Place. So I find my sound file on the desktop. And it's called Happy Birthday Mambo. Click Open. And I'll select the sound file. OK. So I have this file here. It's, it's represented by a little square. You see the little sound icon here. This is uh, <clears throat> the song. If I wanted to play this right now very quickly, I'm in the digital publishing uh, palette configuration here. So I'll click on Media. I select the sound file and play it. Okay, little Latin happy birthday for you. Okay, so now <clears throat> what I want to do is create a button that triggers that sound to come on. And then I want to click on the button and the sound goes off. So it's going to be an on-off situation. So what I did was I downloaded a button from Google Images, and I will do that. Import that, Command D or File Place, bring the sound button, open that up. <clears throat> oh, I want to place that down here, so I'll draw a box about that size. Okay, so here is my sound button. Now I'm going to want to have two buttons one button is to play, and the other button is to stop. So, with that, I am going to Option click and duplicate this button. So I have two buttons. Okay, so the first button is going to be my play button. And I'm going to go over to buttons and forms. And I'm going to make it a button <clears throat> by clicking this convert to button icon here. And I'm going to call this button the play button. Play button. And the action that I want it to have is to play a sound. So when I click Sound, you can see that file show up here <clears throat> under my actions. But I also want to add another action, and that is to show and hide buttons and forms. And you'll see what this does in a second. So let me give that a, uh, <clears throat> a click. So I have two things here under Actions. Play uh, the sound and show hide buttons. I'm going to go over to this button here. And I'm going to make it a button also. And then I'm going to call this the stop button. Stop button. And okay, it's just checking to see if I was sharing my screen. <laughs> I mean, if I was recording this. Okay, and I am. <clears throat> okay, so here's the button, and I'm going to call this the stop button. The action is again going to go to sound, and then uh, what I want in the options is to stop. And then I'm also going to add show hide buttons. Okay, so if I click on this button, you can see that it's the play button. 
and what it's going to do is play. And then when I click on this, it's the stop button. All right, <clears throat> so let's test this out. Now, one of the things we have to do is we have to see the visibility and you have to kind of wrap your head around this one. It's not too hard, but if I click on this one and select this, what I want this button to do is <clears throat> I want this is the play button. So I want the stop button to show when I click this, because when I click this, this is going to hide and the stop button is going to be visible. So I'm going to click on the stop button here and if you click three times, you have an X, an I for visibility, and then an I with a line through it, meaning that we don't see that. So what we want to see with the stop button is we want to see it when I click on this. When I go to the play button, and <clears throat> I want the play button to be, when I click on it, I want it to disappear. So it's going to be invisible. Uh, now I'm going to go over to this button, <clears throat> which is my stop button. And when I click on this button, it's going to be the exact opposite. What I'm going to want is the stop button to not be visible and the play button to be visible. OK, so uh, I'm going to test this out. And the way to test this out is to Click your preview spread EPUB here, and let's just test this out and see how it works. Okay, so I have these two buttons. Now this represents the sound file, and I'll show you how we're going to hide this in a sec. But this is my play button, and when I click the play button, then I click this button, the stop button and it stops. Notice how when I click the stop button, the play button shows up. When I click the play button, the music plays and the stop button shows up. Okay, so <clears throat> we know that works. And so now it's just a matter of putting the play button on top of the stop button. So I'll take the play button and I'll put it right on top of the stop button. Now just to make sure that it's on top, I'm going to go up to Object, Arrange, and bring it to front. Okay. So now I'm going to grab both of these buttons. I'll put them right here. And so now when I click this button, the play button, it's going to disappear, play the music, and then the stop button is going to show up. I'm going to click the stop button. It's going to stop the music, and then the play button is going to show up. Let's try that. <clears throat> I will go to uh, my EPUB preview, or you can, uh, on your keyboard, you could do Option, Shift, and Return. Option, Shift, and Return. Okay, so this is my play button. I'm going to click it. Click it again, and it stopped. Okay, it doesn't look like anything changed here, but what actually happened is that when I clicked the play button, it disappeared and the stop button came out. And since these buttons are exactly the same, <clears throat> it didn't look like anything happened. Okay, so I know that works, and so now I've got to just figure out how to hide my sound file here. Now, <clears throat> in InDesign, whenever you create uh, or whenever you bring in the sound file, it has to be touching the page. And when it touches the page, you get those little, um, you get a controller that wants to show up. And those three little dots are the controller that's trying to show up. The reason that you don't see the controller is because this box is so small. But if I made this box really, really large, you would see the entire controller. So all we have to do is hide this uh, controller. <clears throat> now, if we had a photo here, we can put it behind the photo and we can, you know, hide it that way. And so I could do that. Let's say instead of a photo, I'll just draw a box. OK, let's say this is a photo and I'll fill that box with a color. 
and I'll just put that box on top of this sound file and it covers it. Okay, so the sound file is still on the page, but it's underneath this box or photo or graphic or wherever you want to put it. You can also make this sound file as small as you want. Okay, you can really make that tiny and then hide it behind that box. Okay, so now when I preview this, again, I'll use the, uh, or preview this, I'll use the Option Shift Return button. There's my graphic or photo. Play it. And stop it. Okay. <clears throat> I can make this any size I want. I'm going to select both of them. And I'll hold the Command and Shift key down and make these very small. And maybe I want to place that right in the corner there. And again, preview, Option Shift uh, Return. And click, and it stops. OK, so that's how you bring in a sound file and then trigger it with the button <clears throat> to play and to stop. Now, and these are actually two buttons on top of each other. One's play, uh, one stop and one's play. Now what we could do <clears throat> is we could make, see every time the music stops and you click play, it starts from the beginning. Let's say you wanted to have the music pause instead of stop. Okay. Well, we know this is our play button. We know this is our stop button. So I'm going to click on this button here. And <clears throat> instead of uh, it being a, let's see. I have to, hmm. actually, I have to create a new button. I think I have to create a new button and uh, make it a pause button instead. So right now this button is already programmed to be uh, a play button so or a stop button. So um, I would have to make the button be a pause button. I would label it and then I would put the play button on top of the pause button. And then when I click the play, it would play the music, disappear. Then when I click the pause button, it would pause the music and disappear. And then when I click the play button, it would start playing from wherever that the music was paused. So I could do that. <clears throat> I can actually stop and have the music start from the beginning, or I can pause it and have the music play from that pause point. What I can't do is all three. I can't play the music, pause it, and then play it again, and then stop it. If that's what you want to do, you need to create a controller, and you can do that. You can create a, your own controller, or you can use a controller that is automatically created uh, without these buttons, <clears throat> which could be in another lesson. But in any event, that is how you do it. Again, play. And stop. And that is it. As simple as that. We'll see you again on the next video.